Hey, what's good, folks? Welcome to the Realm Royale Patch Notes. Shadowfall is the name of the update this time around. My name's Tom Badinger. I'm F. Dot. I'm filling in for Nick. Don't worry, he'll be back. Crent, though, filling uh, in for himself. How's it going, bud? Going good. How about you? Not bad, not bad. I uh, Last time I was on camera with you, I think it was 2012. But here we are. It was it was last month. All right, we did D and D. That was fun. Yeah. But we also have uh, two other friends here. You know, Jay Nash and of course Chuck. How you guys doing? What's up? You guys, doing well, you guys yeah. doing well? Yeah. You guys doing well? Yeah. How was your uh, your morning? It's good. A lot of prep for for this. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a pretty exciting. Realm has been uh, resurging lately. A lot of new interest in the game. Yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun, you know, and we've got we've got uh, we've released a bunch of cool new content. You know, we had catapults last patch, which was pretty fun, and uh, this patch is no different. So lots of cool stuff uh, to check out in the realm. Yeah, plenty of new skins, uh, a sort of a new gun as well. We'll explain as we kind of get on going things. Uh, new balance and bug fixes as well. So fun stuff all across the board as far as Realm is concerned and what we're doing with. So as I said, the Shadowfall bundle is what we're talking about. But Jay Nash, I want to touch on the Battle Pass right now as things are. This is kind of the last shot to jump into BP2. Right. Uh, with OB17, which will come out sometime in March, uh, the... Steel and Shadow Battle Pass will be ending, so OB-16 will be your final chance to finish the Battle Pass and unlock all that cool content that's in there. So don't miss this opportunity to, like, get that sacred wolf mount because wolf. you're, you're going to kick yourself later if you don't have that. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I mean, that's, uh, that's always the fun stuff is looking at the Battle Pass and what that offers. But, of course, we've got stuff coming out this update mm -hmm. as well. Brand new content. Shadowfall is going to offer a whole bunch of cosmetics, 850 crowns, which should be cool as well. Yeah. Yeah, so this bundle's great. It's going to give you a uh, character skin, a chicken skin, and a mount. You can check it there. Also a bunch of crowns to uh, spend in the store. It's very imposing. Yeah, I, I would not mess with this guy. I mean, this is, this is, the warrior skin is literally called the Lord of Darkness. He I is. Mean, I'm going to cut myself on that edge real quick. Chicken, though, I like this one. What's it called? Shadow Beak. Oh, God. Uh, which one, which one did you come up with, Trent? Uh, I don't, I think mine was Lord of, Lord of Darkness. I think yeah. the rest of the team came up with the other ones. So. I, I, I believe that, actually. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes sense for you. It's I, he is classically edgy. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I, however, came up with the, the Nightmare. Nightmare. With a horse. K. A knight. Yeah, night, I, I didn't come up with anything. <laughs> I, I, don't I, get, think, I don't get it. So it's when you at, uh, it's it's uh, when you're sleeping. Sometimes you see a scary thing. It's called a nightmare. Uh, but a horse is also a mare, and he's a knight. Look at and that. the horse yeah. is also armored. It is the knight of horses. Yeah, it is absolutely fantastic. I think we can take a look at this in game as well instead of just this beautiful splash art. So we'll come right there, and that is crap. That's the Lord of Darkness. Check him out. He's so cool. He's got, he's got these glowing eyes, and they sort of like, there's that little, like... Burning. Yeah, and they, they sort of, like, trail off into the distance. Oh, I love it. It's pretty nuts. Kind of kind of blue element. What brought the, uh, I mean, darkness, I'm always thinking, obviously black, but I'm also thinking, like, purple. And so what brought this color scheme about? We just, I mean, we had just released the rainbow bundle, and that was kind of like fun, lighthearted content, gummy chickens and rainbow ladies and unicorns. <laughs> and we wanted to kind of, you know, flip it, do the opposite. Sounds about right. Looks like. Scary darkness. Yeah, this guy looks pretty <laughs> edgy. nasty. Certainly edgy, don't wanna, edginess. I don't want to run into this guy, you know, late at night. Certainly an issue there. He's going to have some fun, though, because like we said, we have uh, we have a chicken and a horse skin to go with him as well. So we'll take a look at those in a little bit. But right now, the warrior guy is moving to the left. He's moving to the right. A little bit of the Cupid shuffle. Yeah, and th this is going to be a warrior skin specifically. So if you're a warrior player, this is definitely one to add to your arsenal. It it's super cool. He's got tabards. Uh-oh, oh, really? Tabards? Tabards? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. This is, uh, this is our first Flaps. tabard. You can see it sort of hanging from his waist and... That was, uh, you know, it's really cool that our uh, our rigging team, the animation team, get that going. Um, Chuck, what sort of goes into all that, like adding a tab or adding a new element to a skin? Um, we try to periodically add new skeletal elements that we can then use for different skins. So, you know, basically you got to put a bone chain in for each of the tabards, and they've got to go through oh, all wow. of the 1,000 or whatever realm animations and, and do it, but... It unlocks tabards for us in the future. So. Small, yeah, a lot, a lot of uh, small sort of 
links in the chain to make something like that happen. For the layman, it's like, yeah, okay, so he's wearing a new shirt, but behind the scenes, there's a whole lot that has to go on. Uh, as far as big things, though, let's take a look at that horse, the mount, the nightmare. Look at that one. All right, it, it matches, which is pretty cool. So this is a warrior skin for the Lord of Darkness. What about the mount? Can I use this with other classes? Yeah, Absolutely. you can. The mount and the chicken are just, yes, universal. Yeah, I, I think it would actually go quite well with the uh, the uh, hunter skin, the uh, Twilight. Oh, Huntress. Twilight yeah. Huntress, yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Although I like to ride the unicorn with her, but. Oh yeah, I do like. I like, I, I like some dichotomy. Yeah. <laughs> I love the unicorns. Magical girl on the evil horse. There you go. It's like when 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 Crit brings his giant motorcycle and his bright pink leather jacket. It's a great look. I actually really want a bright pink. Shut <laughs> up. Yeah, that'd be good. For me. Be good. I, yeah, good. I would. Uh, I would love to see that, actually. <laughs> Me too. I, I was going to say buy it for you, but a bright pink leather jacket is a custom job. That's yeah, it's probably expensive. Really expensive. Yeah. This guy's got a nice custom job. This is the Lord of Darkness warrior skin. And, of course, the Nightmare is what we're going to be calling the mount. And the chicken, Shadow Beak, is going to be uh, themed up as well. Let's take a look at what happens when, uh, oh, no, I got sniped. That... <laughs> He's still so evil and edgy. <laughs> You couldn't take that chicken in a fight. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a legit reaction, by the way. Look at him. Oh, uh, yeah, it's so great. <laughs> I can't handle this. So, uh, it, it's it's very interesting. When you look at the warrior skin, it's very serious, for lack of a better term. And what I love about this is that the chicken skin is just as serious, per se. He's trying. But it's a chicken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's really trying hard here. Uh, I mean, this. How, how much fun is, is it to like work on something like this? It's very fun. I mean, the, the the split between having the like heroic characters and goofy chickens is is very enjoyable to work with. I think that's kind of the fun of Realm as well. Is is kind of the uh, you had mentioned the word dichotomy, which I love. I think that has a, a lot to do with like the gameplay as well. There are these moments where it's real X's and O's, and you're trying to really battle things out, and then all of a sudden, well, my teammate's a chicken, and I'm flying in the air, and things are kind of fun like that. So I think that's kind of like the heart and soul of, of what Realm does. So. Or when you've got two people that both get chicken on either <laughs> team, and they're running yeah. around each other, and you don't know who's going to turn back into a warrior first. Yeah, and then you yeah. try and, like, you've got a teammate, so you try and body block the other chicken a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and get in the way. I don't know. Chickens just like shield. I like get shot, and I'm like, oh no! But then I see my chicken, and I just smile again because I'm like, oh man, he's so goofy. Or you leave through a window, and yeah, yeah it's fun. the sound effects are always good too. The music, you like bobbing along to it, and like, yeah. Just yeah, a lot of fun. Absolutely. <laughs> the uh, the bagoo is especially once you escape. Way. When yeah. a chicken escapes, you're just like. Best chicken. <laughs> how often, actually, do you guys have have like advanced stats like that? Are you able to tell how often a chicken escapes? Do chickens? Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, if we talk to our data team, that stats that we can do, we like. There's a little bit of effort required to go For get sure. them, um, but chickens actually do escape a decent amount of the time, and you know that's something that we're very careful with because. Is fun and it's supposed to be an element in the game, but also if everyone gets away all the time, yeah, that wouldn't really be so good for the gameplay. So there's a fine there's line. a balance, yeah, because I feel like I get out and I'm bad, and I feel like I get out like one every fifteen times, and that's really fun for me because it's like that one time you're you're yes, I dumped on them. I'm gonna go die a second time. Here we go. But, you know, it, it becomes not something you expect, but when you nail it, you get really excited. So yeah, and I think it's like it's that. a lot of fun when you get those sort of, like, stealth elements in a PvP game, right? Because mm -hmm. when a chicken escapes, most of the time, it's because you snuck away, right? Like, very few times are you going to actually run away and escape and outpace someone, especially with movement abilities up. I think you have to outsmart them. You got to jump through windows. Yeah. yeah. I think my favorite mm -hmm. moment is when you're sitting in the corner and you're like, I got it. I have no idea... <laughs> and they're like, oh, I don't want to use it. And then all of a sudden, you're like, oh no, it's back on. Like, he's touching run, run again. That's that's the moment. The chicken, the chicken's not very good that's at hiding. He gets nervous. <laughs> he gets so, nervous. Sometimes he winds up getting away. Now he'll have to have. A, now he'll have an even harder time getting away because he's in this glowing blue armor. Uh, so that'll be that'll be an issue there. Um, do you guys think about? Do you guys think about that when it comes to skins and stuff as well? Um, how it impacts the game. Yeah, it's something that, like, 
comes up and you have to discuss, and there's also an element of, like, I will play something bright and not camouflage at all, just to sort of the things that we did with one of our first mounts, right? It just, it glows. <laughs> like, you can see it anywhere. Um, and, and that can be a lot of fun, but also, you know, like, finding a balance of, like, making sure that the skin still looks like a warrior right. and, and stuff like that. Yeah, that, that's and we have of, outlines, so that tends to kind of balance it, right? If an enemy is visible, he's got the red outline no matter what. So mm -hmm. even if it's even if you made a camouflage chicken, you know, <laughs> as long yeah. as you can see him, you can see him. Mm -hmm. Well, James actually mentioned it right there at the end. You know, you can tell that a warrior looks like a warrior, right? And I see that Lord of Darkness skin, and I I knew it was a warrior. I can't tell you why I know it's a warrior. What are kind of the the, uh, the design elements that keep those classes intact? Warriors have large pauldrons. Uh, mages have short pauldrons and generally a cape. Assassins have a cowl and kind of generally dark color schemes. Hunters have the quiver. So there are some elements that are not like 100% to all the skins, but um, there are definitely guidelines that kind of help you get a feel for the theme. That's a real. That's, that's a real. Uh, when you talk to when you talk to game designers, if you're not like kind of in, in in those circles, there's a lot of uh, psychology behind game design, and I always find that very 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 interesting. And so that's that's one of those aspects where, like, like I said, I could probably not tell you why I knew that was a warrior or why some of the other skins. I instinctively know what they are, but I mean that's what a lot of the work behind the scenes is when it comes down to art is talking about trying to kind of fulfill and, and make that connection in your brain without saying warrior on top in, a, in sort of a, a nameplate type way. Right, and it, it, you know, it, it's also an interesting balance because with the way our game currently works, we want to introduce these new skins, mm -hmm. and like this one, oh, yeah. another warrior, right? You can sort of know that instinctually. Oh, absolutely. And with the talent system, knowing that it's a warrior tells you, it doesn't tell you everything that the character is going to do, but tells you the sort of things that they can do, which is interesting. It gives you an idea of the of, of what potential play style you're going to run into, right? I know a warrior and is going to be a little bit more aggressive than some of the other characters, etc. So here's our here's our uh, Forge Fire Knight. And I think this is, I think it's really fun. Obviously, you're addressing the, uh, it's a callback to the forges in the game itself. That's kind of fun. Yeah, he, uh, you know, he sort of was like, I don't like being a weak, puny, mortal person. <laughs> but forges, they never go out. That's true. You just stick a forge on yourself, and then there you go. Immortality. Done. Oh, so the voice it, pack on this, too, is oh, like blast. super yeah. intense. Is it so deep? <laughs> you really down there, huh? Yeah, that's you do that better than me. Coming. The fog is coming. Under fire, on my way. <laughs> Hold your fire. I love it. It's so good. Enemy spotted. It, it's sort of nonchalant too, right? Like he's not like worried about things. He's just like telling you. <laughs> right, it's not like an it's not like an order like hold your fire. It's like he just says it, and you're not gonna mess with this guy. Just so you know, they're out of bread. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a regular old warning. So the uh, the Forge Fire Knight is actually pretty cool in that it's gonna be in our brand new shop in the game. Uh, because we're trying to introduce new content to the shop and cycle in and out content over time. So we should be seeing some new items like the Forge Fire Knight, and this will be available uh, when OB-16 arrives. Yeah, I uh, love the changes there. Like you said, we're going to be cycling some stuff out in the shop. The shop also should be easier to navigate as well, which is pretty sweet. Uh, just an easier kind of look there so you can find your Forge Fire Knight. We've got some more stuff coming out, though. Uh, we've got... <laughs> Another good chicken skin. This is <clears throat> Bok, uh, <clears throat> Boxerker. I love this. Yeah, he's the Boxerker. <laughs> because it's Berserker, but with... Right? <laughs> yeah. Right? You're That's not going to mess with him? Look at him. He's terrifying. He's got an axe. I'll be honest with you. I'm probably messing with this guy. <laughs> no, you can take him. <laughs> he's a chicken. Crap. All right. Would you rather take one chicken-sized Fortifier Knight? Or ten Forge Fire Knight sized box circers. Well, the box circus can't fire their chickens. <laughs> he right? has an axe. 
<laughs> but he can't use it. He's right? We're not talking about in the game, in real life. If they pop out of the oh. screen, you're in trouble. I guess so. But if there are a bunch of smaller Forge Fire Knights, I imagine they are still very hot to the touch. Yeah, that's true. And it would just burn your feet. But I mean, check out this guy. He's so cool. And, oh, like, really? this is, like... His depth perception is off, though. He's only got one eye. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, that's but true. But he's clearly very tough, so it makes up for it. That's true. That's he true. could take the other chickens, though. The, I'll give you that one. He yeah. could take other equally sized... Gummy chicken? Yeah, he's... Mm -hmm. he's Not going to stand up to him. <laughs> no, definitely going to take care of gummy chicken as well. But could he take on this one? It would certainly be a... Treat to see. Oh. I'll be here all week, folks. There. Look at that. It's glorious. Chicken la creme. <laughs> I, I, it makes me so happy every time I see it. This chicken is just, it's just a pastry. <laughs> what I love about this is there's no attempt to even resemble Look a chicken. Look at his little hands. It's just a pastry. Look at the cinnamon rolls. There's no chicken involved this is not one of those like when you go to sweet hut and they're like here's a delicious croissant with a hot dog in the middle there's no sweet and savory this is just an eclair look at the way he waddles <laughs> he's so terrified he's just a chicken. my favorite part is his uh the jimmy eyebrows that give him the real scared look i want to, I want to see ah! <laughs> he's great and Man. he kind of has the creamy pompadour too which is yeah, He's I like just that. So much fun. He definitely looks like a tunnel snake. I will give you that. Absolutely, and fantastic voice acting on this chicken specific. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Well, chickens don't have voice lines. Wow. I was about to say, play the. <laughs> they, they, you know, they do like Yeah, they. Yeah, uh, yeah, they, yeah they're afraid. They make. I, I wanted to hear him say, "Fog is noises. coming." He does as no, a pastry, it, but. Not like that. Nah. Yeah, just James sort of. He's just saying that because I did the VO he's, for the. He's actually a pastry. Donut. Yeah. Chuck is a pastry. It is the best chicken VO we've it got. Is. I believe it was it's fun really pretending good. to be a warrior that had been transformed suddenly into a pastry. I believe that I've done I've done some VO I've done um I've done uh, some VO for for Bomb King in our in our yeah. theme. so yeah that was fun VO's fun you're kind of like locked in this in this like padded closet not my first time and then you're just kind of yelling in this microphone while Crown on the outside goes how about a little bit more instead of <laughs> yeah that's actually exactly what I do <laughs> that is exact, I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding we well, had a voice line we'll keep an eye out for when we have something perfect for you there you go yeah always down absolutely this is a big deal to me though um, I've been playing Realm Royale since the start obviously I mean we like work together yeah. So I've been playing since the beginning, and the Venom Pistol and I haven't always gotten along. I always felt that it was an interesting weapon, uh, especially interesting concept, but the name and the, especially what it looked like, didn't really match up. The Shredder is the new name for this pistol, and by, that is a model. That, that is a model. It looks like it do what it do. Yeah. Exactly. And I mean, yeah, this gun... <laughs> Is very strong. It shreds people, and now it actually sort of looks like something that does that. Whereas before it was, it was like just a normal pistol. Why did it do that? Now this thing, I one thousand percent believe that. You know, it's terrifying. Yeah. It's interesting because I had, I had just mentioned how game design is is a lot of psycho uh, psychology as well. And when I look at the little, like I said, I look at the little pistol and I get killed by it, I'm immediately making a Reddit thread. I'm so mad because it doesn't look like it. So when all of that conversation... It's a terrifying weapon, for sure. Yeah, and it just didn't look like it. So how much of the design conversation went, well, we don't have to necessarily change the element of the gun, we just have to make it look like... Like, how much of how much of that conversation revolved around this model versus changing things top down? It was That's... a little bit more elaborate than that, and that originally... We, I had sketched this weapon as an SMG, and then we ended up doing a different thing with the SMG, and then we were like, oh, this would be perfect to rework the Venom Pistol with. Mm -hmm. Right. Thus the Shredder was born. And so it's, one of the things that I care about as a designer is that things, like, tell you what they do based on what you look like, and yeah. the Venom Pistol is a very, like, it works in a very unique way. And this weapon tells you that it works in a unique way. The name right? as well. Like, you you might not know exactly what it does by looking at it, but you know it does something special and interesting. Mm -hmm. The old Venom Pistol didn't really communicate that and it's well. it's got blades on it. It looks yeah. like it shreds. And look at those needles. Oh, they're so cool. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a scary. It's a scary item. What's interesting, I what what I find is interesting is that you guys went in this direction. I think it would have been probably easier to try to just kind of go. Oh, all right, yeah, we'll we'll do something different. But I like that you kind of preserved that. Was that was that as as uh, difficult of a conversation as it sounds? Yeah, the venom pistol has always been a bit of a, a strange weapon. Like it, it, it's got a very unique gameplay element to mm-hmm. it, but we've been able to put it in a spot where it's effective. People would say too effective, and that's something <laughs> that you know we're keeping an eye on. But we've made it be effective, and we're happy with the way that it works and the role that it fills. Right. It's very so it, contextually specific. And exactly. Specific. It doesn't feel like the function is something that shouldn't exist in, in Realm. Uh, so we didn't want to change that. We just wanted it to feel internally consistent. What's interesting is that, as you said, you know, as you keep, continue to keep an eye on it from a balance perspective, I don't underestimate, and maybe I'm kind of ruining the placebo effect here, don't underestimate how much different it will feel just for a model and a name change. You'll get in there and see the gun, and it will feel different. I know playing a number of different games, a big deal for me is sound effects. When I hit you with a giant ability, and it doesn't sound like it, it doesn't feel like it either. So I think the the, the uh, mentality here will be, Really sound. The Shredder coming through. New name, new model, same old song and dance. You still don't want to get hit by it. If you do, though, you're going to need some potions. We're updating the potions as well as some armor as well. So we're going to take a look at what we can do there. And, right, well, right there behind him, there is the armor, the left, and then some health pots later on. Yeah, so the real thing here was that the potions were a little uh, tempy. Tempe, yeah. um, and then we kind of finally got around to doing it, and you know, now once the gameplay had fully settled down, and the, the, you know, the potion rolls were very well defined and all that stuff. So we just reworked them so that a we get a little bit better information conveyance. Armor potions are clearly different than yeah. health potions, not just by color but also by shape. Yeah, there's a little, uh, um, little armor thing on them too, and we got some real transparent glass. That's pretty cool. And yeah, this is uh, another kind of neat reminder that as we go through more and more updates, um, Realm, you know, we still does have some of those kind of hangover uh, where it's, um, what's it called, kind of in the beginning of things. So we'll see some of these new modernizations come out. And I'm always down for some of these seemingly small changes that wind up making it just feel a little bit more immersive. Polish. There it is. That's the word. Nice and polished up there. So clean stuff coming out. But, of course, the skin right there is going to be your Forge Fire Knight. You can pick that up in the next one, the next Shadowfall update. So cool stuff coming out as far as the Shredder is concerned and a lot of those skins. But we've got some more stuff, and I want to talk to you about it, Jay Nash, across the table. Cross progression this time around. Yeah, um, the OB-16 update is bringing cross-progression for so players can carry over their battle pass, their, cl- their battle pass XP, class XP, and cosmetics between Steam, Discord, and Xbox One. So, you know, let's say you're a Discord Nitro member and you claim that really cool Sprinkles chicken skin. Well, now you can take it to your Steam account or your Xbox One account. Uh, the Founders Pack also applies for Xbox One. So you'll get to use some of your cool cosmetics across, you know, whatever platform you play. That's the key for me is uh, the earlier in the day it is, I'm more likely to be playing on PC. And then as I get more tired, I'm sitting on the couch playing on my Xbox. But I want everything to kind of line up. So I think this is a a really slick uh, update. Just kind of a behind-the-scenes, under-the-hood type stuff, getting things more uh, more in line with the future, right? Cross-play, cross-progression. That's what it is. Cross-play has been pretty cool. What's been your experience so far? Um... I do like to play at home, and when I'm at home, I tend to play on console, so it's been pretty nice getting on my Xbox One and, and being able to play at home. I'm also on my Xbox, see Thor's nice face on there. Look at that. You know? But uh, it's been really great. Crossplay has been awesome. Um, I know that's a, a feature that a lot of players want, and so I'm just glad that we've had it for a while, and now we're actually taking the next step and in introducing cross-progression as well. It, it, it's fun. We always come up here with like a lot of marketing lingo and some nice buzzwords. But the real life anecdote is that I'm a nerd. My brother less so. My brother has an Xbox and doesn't really know how to do anything tech. A PC, like he, I don't even think he has one. He's got his phone. We can finally play video games together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's dope. Like my yeah. brother is a is a Madden Call of Duty guy. 
And I was like, this game is free to download. I can give you stuff, too. Um, and we can actually play. I don't have an Xbox. I just have a PC. He's the opposite of a nerd, and we can still hang out and game. That's the coolest thing. I don't care what what buzzwords you want to come up to me. I get to play with my homies, and that's really the key. So cross-progression, cross-platform, cross-play. Very, very cool stuff. Another one that I want to give you the floor on here is uh, this is a little bit more kind of the the X's and O's of this side of thing. Talk to me about chest distribution. The so chest distribution is um, it's something that we've been working on for a while. Uh, it's important that we make sure that chests are a continuously like different experience. We want it to be dynamic and interesting, right? Like there were some times in the game where people would always land in the same spot. And on a large scale, like if you're if you really like Lumberfall and you always want to land Lumberfall, cool. If you're landing in the exact same spot, yeah, on the on the bottom with the two chests before you go up the stairs and you have to deal with the two people up there, right? Like we want there to be some reason to switch it up, right? And so having chests spawn dynamically is cool and good, but except we'd, we'd run into situations where you'd go into a house and you're like, I'm gonna get something, and there's nothing. There. Yeah. So we've taken some steps. We've worked on the algorithm, and it will now like more evenly <coughs> distribute those chests. So you're much more likely to find a chest in a house, at least one, and then there's still elements of randomization on there. So you know you're not going to be in a situation where like you drop on the outside of Trinity Hills and there's one house and there's no chest and you're just like, well... And while you're in the one house with no chest in it, you can hear other people oh, landing yeah. outside the door yeah. and then you know it's going down and that you've got nothing. You got so, nothing. Yeah. No, I, I feel that because Nick and I, every game without fail, Lumber Falls on the right side, we go down the bottom, there's two chests for me to loot, he's up on the top, and there's two chests in that house to loot. We do it every single game. We win every Lumber Falls, come fight me, and then we wind up losing later. But that is our guarantee start, and I and I and I get that that can kind of get stale. So. Well, but it, it's also right, like if he always drops at that house, and then there's one time there's just no chest in that house, it, then we lose. Yeah, the <laughs> the other side of that coin also sucks. So it's it's finding a balance, mm -hmm. and we think that this is gonna is gonna help out a lot. I think this is definitely kind of a, a nice look there, kind of balance things out, like you said. Uh, and definitely something we keep an eye on. This isn't a, all right, yeah. we're done, we fixed it, it's cool, we'll see you later. Uh, as time goes on, we see more games, you're going to keep an eye on this right. and adjust it. Distribution of loot is like the game. half of <laughs> what a battle royale is. So this is something we're always going to keep an eye on, on many different levels, right? Like. Loot goblins, legendary chests, but also just the way the normal chests spawn and the percentage of potion chests and stuff like that. We're always keeping an eye on it. This is a step forward to making sure that that's more even, and you know we'll see what it does. We'll evaluate. Maybe it's fine. Maybe we'll make some changes, but we'll be keeping an eye on it uh, throughout this patch cycle and the upcoming patch cycles as well. I'm very excited about this feature. Yeah. I mean, just the, the intro moments to the Battle Royale game are just very pivotal. And I think not having to have the feeling of going in a house and have no chest and then desperately running into another house that has no chest. The amount of times <laughs> Chuck has like come up to me like, I just dropped in this game and I landed and I was at this house. I could hear people drawing outside me and I looked around and there was no chest. <laughs> like, all right. Although sometimes I do win some dagger fights, but yeah. You know. <laughs> You have to go to Hindu Man for those knife fight, those knife fight expertises. I'm equally excited about this next feature, which also, which I have also been, yeah, asking many, you about a few times, quite a few times. It, uh, I love what you said just now, where the beginning moments of a battle royale are are, are pivotal um, in many different ways. From a, from a player aspect, I, I need to have my weapons and my wherewithal to have some fun. And from a design aspect, it, the beginning matches is the feel of the game overall. So for kind of everybody involved, it's important to get that right. And so one of the next changes they're making here is a uh, change to the way that we perceive the starting zone. Right, so while you are waiting in the Zeppelin, uh, before, and also this is a change while the Zeppelin's flying across the map, you'll now be able to see where the first circle is gonna be. Um, so that's where the fog is going to close into and stop first. And you'll also be able to see the path of the Zeppelin that I love. while you're waiting in the Zeppelin. So we want to give players a little bit more time to plan out what they're going to do. You know, there have been a lot of times where I'm playing with friends 
and it's like we get in this F1, and it's like, where are we dropping? Uh, Center hole, Lumberfall, and like everyone's arguing that we all go to eight different spots and we all die. Uh, and you know, hopefully somebody can make the hero play and resurrect us, but <laughs> most times everyone dies, you know, and it's like, all right, next game, we're gonna drop this place, and then we of course argue again and it happens all over again. Uh, this is going to be great because in the Zeppelin, you can look at the map. You can actually take the time to discuss, hey, where are we going? Circles here. You have a little bit of information. You can choose whether you want to drop really hot into, like, you know, Lumber Faults in the center of the map. So it's probably usually pretty close to the circle. Uh, or maybe you want to drop on the outskirts and you want to, you know, go through. So, like... Maybe you want to drop like two POIs away from the edge, right? Sure. So that you can hit crossing and then lumber fall and then get inside the circle. A lot really of options. The lumber falls don't even show up. <laughs> well, either way, you've got options, you've got information, you can make those educated decisions. And we're excited to see what players do with this new knowledge. And, you were M too. Well, the main thing about this for me is that, you know, the map is very large and has like lots of different play experiences in it. Um, the problem is if you don't know where that first, you know, the general area in which the gameplay is going to be taking place from a rough level, it makes you leery of dropping into edge parts of the map, right? Which would be different, fun, interesting places for you to get to have an experience. Um, because if you drop in Lost Forge and the circle is way over here, you're going to spend the whole game riding mm -hmm. against the fog, right? I mean, who goes which to you don't want to do. Town? Right? Like, that's one of the issues. Right, and Guntown's really cool. Like, there's some actually some decent pathing there from Forge to Forge, and, you know, if you're in a situation where you can drop Goblin Gulch, and then you can go to Guntown, and then you can go to uh, Jaguar's Claws, yeah, Jaguar Claws, and that's, that's like, all right, five minutes, we're going to be at Jaguar's Claws, it's going to be just inside the fog. That actually becomes a really good path. See? But now you have the information. So you know that you could do that. So you won't just drop Trinity Lumberfall Crossing all the time because you just, you know. Those are always going to be safe-ish, right? Like now right. you can you can have a safe drop that's on the outskirts because you know you have that information. So excited to see how this plays out. We should finally drop Guntown, Nick. I'm trying to get him to drop Guntown for It's cool. Him. We got plans on, on Guntown. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Guntown could be changing it up. Big stuff there as far as uh, the, the place. So you understand where the first draw, starting zone is going to be as far as the fog and where the Zeppelin path is going to be. Right. That's a big deal. I think that that is just, it feels like cleanup to me. Sure, there's a world, there's a mentality where like, well, that difficulty is a part of the game. No, it's not. Don't be silly. I think this is just, just smoother play in the beginning for sure. Yeah, I mean, also like knowing the path of the Zeppelin is cool, right? Because you know which direction yeah. it's going to be. You can plan out, like, hey, when do I want to drop? Like, am I going to, you know, drop midway and go for, like, the long fall, or am I going to drop closer to above something? Mm -hmm. Should have a lot more options, which is a good thing in this case. Cool gameplay changes across the board as far as what we're seeing with uh, changes to the gameplay elements beginning, middle, some skins, and now some some of the stuff, the stuff that's got to get done. The optimization, right? We uh, we optimize a lot of what's going on under the hood. Uh, talk to me about some of that stuff. Yeah, so we've, um, you know, we've constantly had an eye on this and we've been working on it. Uh, we've improved performance on all platforms, which will be good, and we've eliminated some hitching. Um, what's that? So hitching are, are cases where that uh, where your system might like hold up for a brief moment. So you're like, you're doing something and then, uh, and then you keep going. We, we've eliminated some cases of that Still, you know, consistently working on that For stuff. Sure. Improving performance is a part of that as well. Uh, we've also aggressively addressed crash reports, which is something that we're continuing to do. Crashes suck. They, you know, stop your momentum. And we've eliminated some of them. We're continuing to do it. And, you know, just monitoring and improving is a big focus in this update and in coming updates. Yeah, you guys are doing a lot of work there. I uh, every now and then I visit Crit, you know, just to, I distract him. So if there's ever an issue in the game, it's probably my fault. Uh, but you guys are working mad hard. I see the whole squad kind of working to work out these bugs and everything. So kind of kind of cool stuff to see everybody working on it. Interestingly enough, we bought back some performance milliseconds by optimizing the grass. Okay. Yeah. So what, actually, I love this, and, and I, I I want the anecdote because. These are some of the most fun uh, gaming anecdotes. Anyway, there were just polygonal subdivisions in the grass, and 
we we toned them down. It didn't really have a meaningful visual change, but it reduced the geometry of the grass by about half. And when you have, you know, 600,000 instances <laughs> of grass in your map, it's, it's, uh, It'll it's do. a lot of verts. Yeah, it's just sort of like a lot of different elements where it's like you can optimize all over the place and it's an ongoing process. We've made some good steps forward, but, you know, there's always more stuff to do, like, you know, the grass or chests or whatever. Yeah, no, I, I, I actually think that's because I think that's, that's, that's the scale of what you're talking about. Rob Royale is a giant game, and so, you know, whether it's bug or optimization, there's a lot to kind of weed through and get there, no pun intended. So nice, fun stuff there. Everything always improving. And that brings us to balance, baby. Yeah, balance. Uh, so we've made some some good changes this patch. I'm excited to see uh, what people think, and definitely you know give us your feedback from playing in PTS as well. But uh, first one, long bow. The long bow here is going to get some changes. The draw time increased by forty percent. Crying the emoji. Character's going to be a little bit weaker on the pullback, and uh, damage increased by ten percent though. Right. So, so buff or nerf is this? It's definitely a nerf. Um, the increased draw time by itself would just be a 40% nerf, right? And we wanted to make sure that the time between shots and the longbow was longer. It is like in our sniper category, right? but you could fire it pretty quick. So this will slow it down a little bit. Longer time between shots. If you get hit by a longbow further away, you have a longer time to get to cover, which will help a lot. To balance that out just a little bit, we increased the damage so it wasn't just a pure 40% nerf. It comes down to around a 15% reduction in the DPS and the effectiveness of the longbow as it was a very high performance weapon. Uh, we think this will be good, but you know, keeping an eye on it, right? The longbow does need to be powerful to an extent, especially at longer ranges. Um, but does it because of the draw time, it was just kind of too good at every range. We're, we're, we're on the other side. I'm always getting hit by the longbow. You seem sad about this change. I mean, <laughs> I didn't know the longbow was my favorite weapon because it was OP, <laughs> but apparently, yeah. I think yeah, it'll still no. be good, um, but this should tone it down just a little bit. You know, ultimately, it's meant to be a long-range weapon. Exactly. If you're winning fights face-to-face -face and you're not just outplaying somebody... Which I always am. Yes. Uh, but aside from you, um, <clears throat> there were some problems here. So another item that was a little bit too hot to handle the uh, the ice staff is going to take a little bit of a cooling off. Two for two. Oh like wow! One. Yeah. So the ice staff is a lot of its effectiveness is meant to come from the fact that it's AOE, right? And it in the last pat in the last update it was too big. Yeah. We toned it down a little bit, but if it if it gets any smaller of an explosion, it's not going to have that strength anymore. And we want that to be a core part of its identity. So we looked at the damage, and especially with the talent, it was hitting hard. Yeah, it was. I, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, it, you should be rewarded for direct hits, but um, it was, you landed a direct hit with this thing, and it, it was doing a lot of damage. So taking that down a little bit, just a 10% nerf. And we'll see how it compares to other weapons. Good old-fashioned nerf. Real happy about this one. I'm uh, kind of kind of done with being hit by that flare. Projectile projectile speed increased by a third, 33 percent. So this is quality of life more than like a buff. Um, I mean, obviously it does make flare a little bit more powerful. But the big issue is flare's got this gravity, right? So mm -hmm. it, it goes out and then down, and it settles, and it wouldn't really get that far if you were in the open, which causes a problem for an ability that is meant to excel when you're in the open, right? Sure. Like, if you're in house-to-house -house combat, if you want to see if someone is in a house, sensor drone is wh where you want to go. Mm -hmm. You just stick it to the side, won't reveal everyone in the house, right? Flare is like, I'm in a field, shoot my flare up into the air, and it wouldn't really get that far. Now it should get a little bit further, reveal that whole area in the open, and uh, it should help out, make the flare... Uh, it to its identity. Now, somebody only recently explained to me exactly how Flare works. You should explain that to us. Yeah, so, works. yeah, let's be clear. Flare is an ability that you're meant to shoot it up into the air. It's got, it's got very special gravity where it will, the effect of gravity will apply rapidly, and then it'll fall slowly, and it's got this big radius on it. 
So it's doing the most work when it's falling slow. And it's okay. like a cone. That yeah, falls. It, well, it's it's <laughs> it's just a big sphere. It's just this big old sphere. So wherever it is, the higher up, the more it's revealing. It's allowed to go higher. Get someone's face and, and burn them. You'll get that like works. 200 damage. 200. Hilarious. It's hilarious, though. You can kill someone with it. You get a whole bunch of yeah. cool points, though. That's going to be highlight reel. Yeah. Hot plays. I need you to explain um, this one to me. Movement cooldown reduction reduced from 50% to 35. Yeah, so this is specifically for the uh, movement cooldown reduction rune. Um, if you if you found it, which, you know, runes are supposed to be something that you can find. It's a fun and exciting thing to find. It would cut your cooldowns in half. And that was just too dramatic of a change from... Their yeah, experience. The, the, uh, the movement ability becomes different, right? Like, it just functions differently. You use it differently to the point where it was kind of jarring. And... You know, I think there were cases of people who would get the cooldown reduction rune, and they weren't then using that ability to its full potential because cooldown was so dramatically shifted. So we've re reduced the efficacy of the rune uh, to just 35%, which is still very substantial. Due to the thirty-five percent, uh, sometimes things are too good, so they have to be changed. too bigger. Yeah. It was too big. We made it less, and you know abilities. You know, if you had the fifty percent reduction rune and blast shot, and you had the cooldown reduction from the talent, your blast shot cooldown was very low, and it would. Trying to preserve that pulse. This is this is something I, I, I really like. So the catapults, the increased air control from catapults by a hundred percent. So now you're flying, and you can actually move around. Yeah, uh, we we want to be careful with the air control because it works in all directions. So air control can make you go more forward. Cool. If the air control is too, cool. if the air control is too much, extra heat. Uh, exactly. But if the air control is too much and you don't know that it helps you go forward, then it's just a dramatically different experience. Sure. So it's just enough that you know you can steer right. That's what we want is the steering. And if steering forward is what you want to do, go for it. Yep. Should be better. I'm a big fan. Like I said, I mean, catapults were... Catapults might be... This is a loaded statement. Might be my favorite single inclusion to the game. Oh. Just being able to just, like... Didn't even occur to... Yeah, like, you got I've it. I've just been yeeting around like... Oh, no, you got awesome. it. It's, it's fun. I gotta go. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the, the air control change is also cool. Because you have a lot of places like um, Ice Haven Forge or Lumber Mill Forge where, <clears throat> you know, you'll ride out of town away from a combat and heal up. And then you want to get in the catapult and launch back onto the forge. But it's like not having quite enough air control. You can't quite hit the roof. <laughs> and that's very frustrating. Right. Yep. So I think it'll open up a lot of interesting strategic options um, for players. A little bit more fine control. Really, what I want to do is I want to I want to load in with my squad and then see who makes it further. Yeah, you can do that. Is that strategically viable? I mean, it's holding W, so it's not that hard of a competition. Listen, if I can win, just don't tell them that they that can, that yeah. is exactly my there you plan. Go. Nick is not here. <laughs> you got it. That is exactly my plan. And one of the final changes that we see on the balance side of things is uh, the increased equip times across many weapons. Many weapons, yeah. So the slower weapons will have larger equip time increases. This is to resolve an issue where players could swap back and forth between two slow weapons to effectively increase their fire rate. The old double shot. Yeah, which increases your DPS. And especially with weapons that have a clip, that's yep. not just two shots, that's ten shots, mm -hmm. right? Um, so if you have a faster weapon, like the assault rifle, the SMG... Uh, those sorts of things with the quicker refire, it actually hasn't been changed. But if you have a weapon that is slower, like a slug rifle or an ice staff or a sniper rifle, mm -hmm. swapping to and from that weapon will be a little bit slower. Uh, and the way it actually works is that your time to swap is half of the time of one weapon and half of the time of the other weapon. Interesting. So if I'm going from sniper rifle to SMG, that is actually going to be a faster swap 
Then and if slug I'm, to yeah, sniper rifle to sniper. slug or sniper rifle to throwing axe. Um, so you can still get to like a sidearm to defend yourself quicker. Right. It's just you know trying to rein in this issue where you have two slow weapons and you could increase their DPS and it really messed with the flow of content uh, of combat in an For unintended sure. way. A couple of good changes there as far as balance is concerned. Um, is there an overlying or an underlying message or an overarching theme here for this balance? Or, is there, or are these just individual balance touches? I mean, I, you know, looking at it, there are some uh, elements that go together. The longbow, the ice staff, sure. and then this equip time change. Uh, slow weapons are very powerful in Realm, especially because it's third person. You can use cover. Um, you can peek with those weapons. And, like... That's fine. That's just sure. sort of the way the game is. But making sure that when you're in a situation where, you know, a faster weapon is supposed to work and, right. and be optimal, uh, then that weapon should should be able to be effective there. a weapon that's not, yeah. That slower is super powerful, but it's beating something that's faster, that's meant for like a mid-range fight, then something there isn't quite working. So we're going to even those things up. Once again, the recap, longbow and ice staff slowed down a little bit. Flare changes how that's going to work out. A little bit of change in some of the runes as well. And then, of course, the catapults, a little bit more control over there. So nice bug, or excuse me, nice balance changes there in the world of Realm Royale. Big fan of not getting hit <clears throat> as hard <clears throat> and often by that longbow. Definitely a big fan of that. Bug fixes, though. We got a whole bunch of trying to keep whole everything bunch. all tidy. Ready, set, go. Alright, so fix an issue with animations while using a potion. Sometimes your animations wouldn't work quite properly. We addressed it. Fix an issue where console players would sometimes not see all callouts on the in-game HUD. That has been addressed. Sweet. Fix an issue where eliminating deployables would trigger the elimination confirm UI element. Which, in normal person speech, is you'd kill, like, a healing totem. Yep. And it would be like, boom, you killed a chicken. Mm. Or you killed a player. And you're like, what? That was a healing totem. <laughs> that could be misleading. We resolved it. Fix an issue where uh, could be found or could not be found. Uh, so we just cleaned up some. Uh, fix an issue where ice staff would have inconsistencies with accuracy at epic rarity. Oof. Epic rarity was operating differently from legendary rarity. They now all operate properly. Uh, and uh, you'll get the intended experience with all rarities of that weapon. Nice. Fix an issue where the legendary swiftness talent wouldn't grant the correct ability. Uh, that could, I believe, forge stuff that wasn't yeah, for your was, class. Yeah, you could do crazy stuff. It's, you know, that is still meant to be your forging a movement ability. You should always get something for your class that's meant to be, you're going to get legendary, but you don't know which one it's going to be. Exactly. But you can use it now. Mm -hmm. So that's been fixed. Uh, exaction would buff all damage dealt within the three seconds. It's only meant to be one shot, so we address that. Uh, so roll shoot. That's going to be real good if you got the single shot weapons like the longbow or the arbalest with the crossbow. For sure. Still pretty good, but not quite as uh, optimal. Fix an issue where console players could get the map stuck on their screen during deployment. That no was fun. it was a pain when it happened. It's now been fixed. Sweet. Uh, fix an issue where players are unable to ADS while ice wall is deployed. You can now ADS while your ice wall is deployed. Cool. Should help out if you've got a wall you're trying to peek from long range. Uh, fix an issue where charge was unaffected by the movement cooldown reduction rune. Charge is just, it's it's got some uh, weirdnesses. It's it's kind of an old ability in our code base. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't being properly affected by this rune, but we fixed it. And now the movement cooldown rune will fix that. Fix an issue where legendary heroic leap said it would deal damage and it would not. That's a tooltip error. We fixed it. It does not deal damage, and it will not say that it deals damage. And then fixed an issue where players revive through a resurrection stroll. We're stuck in a permanent chicken state. Is that a bug? What if I just want to be a chicken? Um, just play normally, and you'll turn into a chicken plenty. <laughs> that was that was that was a low key bird. Yeah, it was. Crit still has it. Was it. Kinda, it was medium key. Actually. Look at you. All right, all right, calm down, buddy. It was okay. It wasn't fantastic. The bug changes. 
The balance changes are fantastic, though. Realm making a turnaround, real cool stuff. Um, so Shadowfall, interesting. What's your favorite part of this patch, Rick? Um, honestly, uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that Forge Fire Night Warrior. That's that's where I'm looking. Yeah, he's super fun. Yeah, especially like when he jumps out of the Zeppelin. That one. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's uh, definitely pretty fun. So as far as everything else is concerned, listen, we know there's some stability issues on the PlayStation 4. They are, I, I love this, this verbiage, by the way, aggressively tackling them as often as possible. Yeah. So stability issues should be cleaned up or cle being cleaned up right now. Yeah, our team is, is tackling that as much as we can. We've been diving in deep. Uh, it's going to take some time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's going to take some time, but uh, we're, it's definitely still a top priority for us. Um, and then sort of a final note, if you don't mind me jumping in here. Of course. Finally um, noting. Yeah, uh, no we actually are going to be bringing the Steam PTS up here uh, before too long, sometime today. It'll probably only be available tonight and a little bit into tomorrow morning. We still need to get some more things onto the PTS for internal, but we want you guys to test it out. Let us know what you think. So uh, dive into the Steam PTS. Yeah, give us your feedback. Talk to the, you know, send it to Jay Nash. Uh, love to hear your thoughts on the game, yeah. the balance. Stuff like that. Any bugs you find as well. Exactly. We we make many promises here. The game is going to be a lot of fun, and the future is going to be very bright. The promise for the PTS tonight, however, is not there. We're going to try our best to get the, uh, the uh, test server up and running. If not, we're sorry. It'll be up tomorrow at the, at, the, at the absolute latest. But tonight is what we're shooting for, and that's uh, what I think we'll be able to grab there. So I asked you your favorite moment. Chuck, what's your what's your favorite part of this pack? I'm excited about the early game gameplay changes and the uh, eclair donut chicken. I like that. So we asked the two important people at the table what their favorite part of the update was. <laughs> and that's going to do it for us here at the Realm <laughs> Realm. Fine, what do you like about the pack? I think Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Again, the Shadowfall bundle going to be available next up. And don't forget, this is one of the last moments you'll be able to grab points for your Battle Pass 2. So make sure you jump in there. It's Josh. It's Chuck. It's this guy, Kret. And it's this guy, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Peace. And much love to you.